I'm Tracy Ashbridge and this video will go through how to interpret the psychologist report. Well, you may have been to see an, an educational psychologist and they have written a report about your child. They've done a cognitive assessment looking at their full scale IQ and different areas of the curriculum and how they're doing. But what do those numbers really mean and how does that into how do you interpret them and understand? So one thing that's important to know is that the assessments that are done by psychologists and some of the ones that are done within school, depending on the nature of the assessment, are what we call norm referenced. So they take a massive group of children of different ages and different abilities and they put them on through the test and then statistically an analyze their results. So they use a, the larger the sample size, the better the results will be. But it does mean that those results, when they're statistically an analyzed, will compare age to age which is really important. So if your child is in year two and they're the youngest child in year two, they're going to compare them to another child of the same age. They're not going to compare them to the oldest child in year two who is 12 months ahead of them. And the other thing that's important to know about these norm reference assessments is they try really hard to look at the reliability. So if your child did the same test the following day, they should get a similar result within a few points. It is important though to know that they don't let you do that because obviously the children would learn the test and many of these tests come with a one or a two year window before you're allowed to reassess them. So the results that you'll see are all falling into the bell curve or the normal distribution curve. You probably learned about this in high school. You measured everyone in the class and you put them, plotted them on a graph and this is what the graph would potentially look like. So 66% of the population or two thirds of the population are in this average range. We have a small percentage who are going to be above or superior and a smaller percentage who are below and again significantly delayed or significantly below. Then that, with those scores, those scores can convert to numbers. So the most commonly converted score is a standardised score. So children get an average score is exactly 100. But if your child scores between 85 and 115, that's well within the normal range. 115 to 130 is above the average range and 130 above is considered superior. They're your children who are significantly gifted. And then on the other end of the scale, we have children between 70 and 85 who are below average. They're going to need extra support. And then right at the end, below 70 are very low possibly children who have an intellectual impairment or have a significant difficulty, but it is a small percentage of the population. Now the standard deviation is where we look at how far away from the mean are you, and this is a statistical analysis, but between um, 85 and 115 takes you from minus one to plus one, with obviously, oops, sorry, minus one to plus one and a zero obviously in the middle. That's your normal range, but if you're falling at minus two, that's significantly, statistically significantly behind. And if you're plus two, you're again significantly ahead statistically. So we can actually use this data. I know when I submit um, assessments for children with speech language impairment, I have to show that there are two standard deviation points between their IQ and their language assessment. So this is used to um, for some funding applications. So percentiles, well percentiles go along the same sort of lines um, that 66% of the population will fall here. They will fall within this normal bracket. It's another way of looking at the same numbers. So here in the middle, instead of it being 100, it's 50. So at 50th percentile, 50% of children who are the same age would do better and 50% of children that age would do worse. So if your child scored on the 95th percentile, 95% of children the same would do worse and only 5% would do better. And on the opposite end, if you had a percentile of 10th percentile, only 10% of children would score worse, but 90% of children in that same bracket would score better. So it's just another way of looking at the same numbers and often these are quoted as well. Now, age equivalents. Lots of people ask me about age equivalents. Should you look at age equivalents? They're not the best data for lots of things. Sometimes the psychologist will put this on and it can be helpful and sometimes they don't choose to put this information on and not all tests will give an age equivalent. So
So, but if you're trying to track progress, so for example, I'm working on a child one-on-one -on -one with a reading program or a spelling program, I may test their spelling age at the beginning and they may have a spelling age of six years and two months. I may test them in six months time and they've made a progress and they're now six months and six months, sorry, six years and six months. So that information is useful. If you are trying to do that on a standardized score, they may have scored 75, but in six months time, they've made six months growth. So there's still a standardized score of 75. So that information doesn't show because to, with the percentiles and the standardized scores, they have to make a massive growth in order for them to show an improvement on those sorts of scores. So an um, age equivalent test can be useful for that. Um, if you are going to test your child again in two or three years' time on the same assessment, if the numbers are the same, that's in some ways that's okay because if they're making the right amount of growth, so if they make two years' growth in two years, those standardised scores and percentiles should be the same, which is sometimes find people find hard to understand. But if your IQ is measured at 100, then in two years' time, we'd expect your IQ to still be 100. Sometimes with very young children, there can be big swings in those numbers, but generally those numbers are fairly consistent. So a scaled score. Now, some, these are used in some tests. The self five, the speech pathologist assessment of speech and language can often be used on this one, um, use this one. So instead of going with the mean being 100, the mean is now 10 and anything between eight and 12 is considered in the average range. Stainimes. Stainimes aren't used particularly commonly. We do use them in school for some of our um, assessments using the PAT R and the PAT Maths. Um, the, it, with the Stainimes, five is your middle point. Three to seven is roughly the um, the OK line. It's just actually it's slightly further out than the lines of the 66%. Um, that's not a very fine tuned. Um, it helps us with groups in school, but it doesn't really help psychologists particularly to help you. T-scores are used for some tests, but teachers don't, um, psychologists don't usually report NUP figures in T-scores. They would convert the T-score into a standardized score or a percentile, because if you're getting your assessments and there's lots of different types of scores, it's really hard to make a comparison if you don't understand the scoring system. But T-scores, basically 50 is the mean, is the average, and then we go back in 10. So this would be 40 and this would be 30. And then going this way, this would be 60 and this would be 70. So again, it, sometimes it's used because it's easier because it works in groups of 10, but it's not really used much outside psychology reports to psychologists. Another one is Z scores. Again, I've not seen these used in a psychology report, but this time we just go 0, 1, 2, and then one and two this side. So whether you're plus one, plus one, plus two, it helps with this. It just works exactly in line with standard deviation. So if you're between uh, minus one and plus one, then you're within one standard deviation. If you're down to minus two, you're two deviations statistically away from the, the mean of zero. So for example, let's have a look at a test score for a child. So your child's been to the psychologist. They have a full scale IQ of 112. So that puts them about here. However, they may have a reading score of 80 and a math score of 97. So this would be reading, this is maths, and this is IQ. So this picture tells me that there's something going on. For a normal child, you would expect all the scores to be within about 10 points of each other. But we've got quite a range from 80 up to 112. Often then the psychologist will look at the pattern of results and this will help to diet make the diagnosis, whether this be a dyslexia problem, whether this be a maths problem. In this case, it's looking like it could be a, a reading problem because there's a big gap between how clever they are, how their IQ and where their reading scores are. But the psychologist will look at all the history of the child. For example, this child may not have been to school for a year because of COVID. So that may be a reason behind this score and they won't make a diagnosis until there's such a time they have enough information to be confident that the score is correct. So these are the sorts of things that the psychologist will be looking at is, are there any patterns in the results? Are there any big differences, big gaps in the results? And how can they be explained? So if you are going to go to the psychologist, one of the things I always recommend is that you spend time with the psychologist and ask them to explain the results to you. 
I work personally, I work with an amazing psychologist who always sits down with the parents and tries to include the teachers at the school as well, so that we can have that meeting together. We can go through the results. What do those results mean? What do those results mean in practice? And then how can we plan for a plan for that child to make adjustments or put interventions in place to help them? If you need any more information, my web, my email's here and my website, tracyashbridge.com. I hope this has been useful.